Uh, back to the countdown. My daughter Chloe's going to introduce the next one for us. Coming in at number 20 is Friday 6, Jason Lives. Thank you, baby. Yep. Uh, number 20 is Friday 13th, Part 6, Jason Lives. Uh, the return of Jason Voorhees. Got rid of all the Roy Burns side crap. Um, I do like how they brought Jason back. Uh, him getting electrocuted in the grave and almost zombifying him and bringing him back. Uh, this is where we're finally not at Mama's Boy anymore it's just demon zombie jason um i do like a lot of the kills in this movie uh the triple decapitation is awesome this is the first and only friday the 13th movie with no nudity i like it i dig it um again with the kills the head that got twisted all the way around um the body snapped all the way in half awesome um things i don't like about this movie a lot it's more comedy um, there is breaking the fourth wall, talking directly to the audience. Not really digging that in a Friday the 13th film. Um, I don't like how they renamed Camp Crystal Lake to Camp Forest Green. I know that's little and minute, but I just don't like it. Um, the paintball characters just drove me fucking nuts. The only reason they were in the movie was to get killed. Um, I don't know. They just kind of bored me. On that, um, the Wilson face when he <laughs> slams the guy into the tree and it leaves a bloody smile. Looks like Wilson um, from Castaway wasn't, I don't know. It's just, that's too campy for me, I guess. Too over the top and uh, I, that's really all I got to say about this movie. It's my shortest review, I guess. Um, it was what it was. It's an enjoyable movie. I would watch it again. Um, I don't cringe at the thought of watching it. But it's not anything that when I think of Friday the 13th, this isn't a film that I'm like, oh, this is the one that I got to put on right now. So it's not bottom of the barrel, but it's not towards the top. So it is what it is. It's Friday 6, Jason Lives, number 20. I'll see you guys tomorrow for number 19. What's going on, guys? Uh, back to the countdown. Coming in number 19 is Friday the 13th, part 7, The New Blood, otherwise known as Jason versus Carrie. Again, not a terrible movie but not a great movie um very cliche teen cast um you got everything the slut the geek the jock you got it all um too many off-screen kills for my liking too um i like the brutality of the kills i think tina's mom and dr cruz are just flat out fucking annoying throughout the whole movie um like when dr cruz sacrifices tina's mom to jason to save himself dickhead um the biggest problem I have with this movie, the lamest ending of it. not just any Jason movie, but any of the big three movies is in this movie. When Tina summons her dad from the lake and he comes up and grabs Jason and pulls him back down to the bottom of the lake, it's the worst. Um, the biggest saving grace of this movie, this was the first time we've seen Kane Hodder as Jason. And everybody that knows me knows Kane Hodder is my favorite stuntman to ever play Jason. Watch this movie and watch how, <laughs> I mean, he gets the shit beat out of him. All movie, falling through stairs, everything. The dude gets his ass kicked and he's awesome. Uh, this one has the sleeping bag kill. You know, put her in the sleeping bag. Um, one of my all-time favorite kills. Um, slamming her against a tree. It was awesome. Uh, the party horn in the eye. He takes the party and it does a little beep when it goes into the girl's eye. I love that. And Tina beats the living shit out of Jason in the whole third act of this movie, which is something we're not used to seeing. Um, wasn't really a big fan of it being the psychic chick who killed her dad, and now she wants her dad back, but she summons Jason. I'm not getting into the whole plot, but she beats the shit out of Jason throughout the whole last act of this movie. Granted, we had Tommy Jarvis before, but he just killed him with a machete. You know, it wasn't like this. Like, Jason is evenly matched in this movie, and it shows. He gets the dog shit beat out of him for the whole third act, and it's fun to watch. So, like I said, don't hate it. Don't love it. It's 19 out of 31. Could be worse. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow for number 18. What's going on, guys? Uh, back to the countdown today. Number 18 is A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 6, Freddy's Dead. Um, this is a lot lower on every other list I've seen, with good reason. Uh, Freddy is way too funny in this movie. Way too funny. Um, riding a broom, the Wicked Witch theme from the Wizard of Oz playing. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little soul. Not too much. Um, recycled storylines. 
from two, three, and four, you know, riding the bus, kids in the hospital, always driving in a circle, not knowing where you're going, ended up in the same spot. Um, John Doe, his character is an overactor in the movie. I'm your fucking memory, let me go. It's just, I didn't like that character. I didn't like the actor, I didn't like the character. Um, now, the biggest problem with this movie, video game Spencer. You know, sucked into a video game, killed in the video game by Freddy. Freddy's controlling it, then he's got the power glove. Great graphics. You know, when he's dying in real life, he's bouncing around like he is in the video game, and it's got the sound effects from the video game. It just unnecessary, and it didn't look good. It looked stupid. It was too comical for a Freddy movie. Now, why is this higher on my list than a lot of other lists? I remember my Uncle Dave taking me and my cousins to see this movie in 3D when I was a kid. Like, that memory has stuck with me all these years. Like, I remember the worms coming at me at the end of the movie with the 3D glasses on. And, you know, um, so that family time I had with my Uncle Dave, like, that was, like I said, it stuck with me to this day. So I do have a fond spot in my heart for this movie because of that. Um, there are parts of this movie I do like, though. Um, the airplane scene, you know, I'm scared of heights and the old lady's like, quit being a bitch. Then she gets sucked out of the airplane. Like that whole scene is awesome. I love that scene. The cotton swab going all the way through the ear and then back out is awesome to watch. Even now doc is one of my favorite characters. Um, the only really good character in this movie. And then at the end, Maggie beating Freddie's ass. Like she whoops his ass and then she puts the pipe bomb in him. Of course he's got his corny kids. Then he gets blown up, but Good movie. Um, like I said, not great. It's higher on my list because of personal memory. Um, I'll see you tomorrow for number 17. What's going on, guys? Uh, back to the countdown today. Coming to number 17 is Friday the 13th part 10. Jason X. Um, <laughs> the cons about this movie, terrible acting. The acting's awful. Um, CGI, everything looks like it's made for TV. Uh, very poorly shot. Very low budget, you can tell. Um, Uber Jason. My problem with Uber Jason is he gets blown up and everything, and the nanobots reconstruct him. That's all cool, but they reconstruct him with a new mask. Like, a little much for me. Um, I don't like the whole first 30 minutes of the movie. Um, how he gets frozen, and then they don't find him until 400 years later. You know, like, there's a lot of plot hole there to me, but it might be a little nitpicky. I don't like the end. You know, how he falls back to Earth, and the mask, not a fan of that. However, in this movie, there's a lot of fun. Fun, fun, fun. It got judged poorly because it's, oh, it's Jason in space. Me included. I judge this movie poorly. But going back and rewatching now that I'm a little older, I had fun with it. Um, I like the head getting smashed after dipped into the uh, liquid nitrogen and smashing the head. That was awesome. Um, the whole plot in space, you know, that, that was fun. Uh, you really felt for the characters. They were going after him, and it was fun to watch. Uh the death screw was awesome. When he falls on the screw and he goes down the screw, how's he doing? He's screwed. You know, like it's corny, but it was fun. Um, Grotsky, love him. He's a beast. When he gets stabbed, he's like, it's going to take more than that to put me down. Oh, that'll do it. And he still wasn't down. He's just awesome. Good jokes throughout the movie. Uh, when the when Jason comes and the guy, you watch your machete and he takes back, guys, it's okay. He just wanted his machete back. It's funny. And then my personal favorite part of the movie, we get a redo of the sleeping bag kill, but with two people and he's hitting one against the other. Like that was awesome. Even though it was just like in a simulation, a hologram, whatever, it was cool. It was funny, you know, for me that throwback to it, it was cool. It was fun. Um, I'd watch this movie again. I don't hate watching this movie. Um, so it's not, like I said, it's middle of the road, 17 out of 31. Good movie. Not great. A lot of fun to watch. Watch it again, Jason X. What's going on, guys? Uh, back to the countdown today. Coming to number 16 is Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Um, this movie is one of the worst for Michael's mask. I don't know. I just, I don't like it. It looks over, it looks too big on him almost. Uh, Lori's killed again in this movie off screen. She died in a car crash with her husband. So this was the first time she died. But, you know, she ended up dying like three different times in this series of movies for some reason. Yeah. Uh, Michael sitting in the chair waiting. Like how he's sitting there and he's acting like he's the cop. And the girl walks up to him and then he gets up. That's just not Michael Myers to me. 
very, very slow movie. Um, I don't like how, again, this is going into part five, but I don't like how Jamie, they ruined Jamie's ending in this movie. Um, while we're talking about Jamie, that's one of the pros of this movie. Danielle Harris, Jamie, she's fucking awesome. I love her character. Um, I always have. I've always been a big fan of Jamie. Um, I love Loomis and the Reverend when they're in the car driving and the Reverend singing and Loomis is drinking with him. Like that whole scene was, it was a fun scene to watch. Uh, I love the vigilante justice. Do you know what you've done? And then all these drunk rednecks are going around with their guns and they end up shooting one of their own in the bushes. Probably, you know, he's just in the bushes for some reason and they all unload on him thinking he's Michael Myers and they fucking kill him. That, you know, I, I like that whole part. Any scene in this movie with Michael and Jamie together is fucking great. Like one of my favorite kid actors in any of the big three, you know, maybe behind Tommy Jarvis, um, little Billy in part five, but it was fun to watch her. She was really, really fun to watch. And this and the sequel, I loved her character. That's one of the cons to them redoing the whole series is she's gone, but it is what it is. And this movie had 16 kills. Michael went ham in this movie, and that is always fun for me. So, number 16, Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Middle of the road movie. Not bad, not great. What's up, guys? Uh, back to the countdown. Coming in at number 15 is the OG, Friday the 13th. Um, watching this movie now, it's definitely dated. I didn't like it as much now as I remember liking it. I guess that's part of growing up. Um, but... Like the strip monopoly scene again. Split a lot of this is split in hairs, but to me, I just can't imagine. Oh, Baltic Avenue, sweet, give me that bra. Like I just I can't picture it existing ever in any universe. Um, all the blown off screen deaths. Again, the older I've got, the more I've come to appreciate the death sequences and that they do. And there's not a lot of that in this movie. And it has the longest, lamest final girl chase fight kill scene. In all the movies, it takes forever to go. It's just a long time. And I don't like Crazy Ralph. Uh, every time he's on the screen, it just irks me at the beginning. Um, I do like the whodunit aspect of the movie. You know, obviously, if you've existed in this universe and you are a fan of horror at all, you know who the killer is in Friday the 13th. Thanks, Scream. Fantastic series. Um, and then the Kevin Bacon death is one of my favorite in all the Friday the 13th movies. You know, again, it's dated. So you can see, but I would take this practical effects over CGI any day. Um, the arrow when she's under the bed and the arrow through the neck. I love that. Uh, Jason's jump scare at the end. I love it. You know, so I can include this in here because Jason is in the movie. You know, when he jumps out, he grabs her. I love that scene. I thought that was cool as hell when I was younger. And I like it now. I don't like how they've repeated it in so many Jason movies. But the original one, that was great. Um, and then Pamela Voorhees' death. You know, getting her head chopped off with a machete. It's fun to watch. Um, number 15, you know, middle of the road. I don't have a lot of good about it. I don't have a lot of bad about it. I wouldn't actively seek it out, but if it's on, I won't shut it off. So number 15 is Friday the 13th. Thanks for watching. What's going on, guys? Uh, back to the countdown today. Coming in at number 14 is Friday the 13th part 9, Jason Goes to Hell. Um, a movie that is a lot lower on every other list I've ever seen. But let's remember, this is my personal favorite, not what I think is the best. Um, like Jason's a worm thing that travels, the spirit transfers and not a big fan. You know, um, there is a lot of bad about this movie. Um, my biggest complaint, and it's always been this, how did all these FBI agents get to Camp Crystal Lake without Jason knowing? Jason knows when there's three campers, but he couldn't figure out that there was a whole bunch of FBI agents. Um, and then Jason has a half sister and we didn't find that out until nine movies later. That's the kind of stuff that bothers me. Um, when Jason is reborn from dead Diana, we he's reborn, resurrected with his mask on. Another thing that I just don't like, just like in Jason X. When the nanobots put him back together, he's got a mask. In this, he's reborn with a mask. Don't like it. What I do like about this movie, however, seeing Kane Hodder in it, he gets killed as a, as a security guard cop at the beginning. That was awesome. Creighton fucking Duke. If you don't like Creighton Duke, I don't know what to tell you. That guy is awesome. He's a badass. Um, the tent, you know, when, they, when he sticks the pole in and he rips the girl in half, 
That is awesome. I love that scene, mainly because it ruins the gratuitous sex scene that's happening, and you know how I feel about that. And this one's almost porno-level sex scene. It's really bad if you watch the unrated one, but see him stick that pole in and rip her right in half? That was awesome. Um, I love Steven in the movie. The fact that the Necronomicon is in this movie, that is awesome. Seeing that little tie into the Evil Dead. And the reason this movie is ranked so high, when I was a kid and I watched this movie for the first time and I seen at the end Freddy's glove come up and grab Jason's mask and take it down to hell, I literally freaked out like I heard Stone Cold Steve Austin's at a WWF event. Like, I was like, oh, that was Freddy in a Jason movie. And that feeling of excitement will always make this movie higher up for me than any other movie. So it's number 14, higher than it should be, but Freddy's glove in a Jason movie. What's going on, guys? Back to the countdown. My daughter Chloe's going to do the introduction once again. What's up, guys? Number 14 is Friday the 13 part two. Good job. Yep, uh, coming in number 13 is Friday the 13th Part 2. Didn't plan that, just kind of happened. Um, from here on out, these are all movies that I do enjoy, every one of them. I like number 13 through number 1 a lot, so I'm kind of nitpicking to find the things I don't like in these movies. Um, like in this one, the intro, how it's just a dream. I know what they were going for, but still, I like how the first one ended, and I would have liked it if they kept it that way. Um, this one is very slow going, and there's only 9 kills. I know that sounds silly, but in the Friday the 13th series... It's kind of a low number. What is good about this movie is the intro of Jason Voorhees. Obviously, he has the little part in part one, but in this one, it's full-on badass Jasonry. Um, I think Ginny is an awesome final girl. I think she's probably the best final girl in all the Friday the 13th series. Um, I like how she tricks Jason. She's got the child. They talk about it in the movie. She's kind of a child therapist, so she knows how the inner mind of a child works. Um, so I like at the end how she tricks Jason by putting on the sweater and making him think that it's his mom come back and then just bam gets him. I like that whole angle to the movie. Um, I like when Mark gets hit in the face with the machete and his wheelchair rolls down the stairs and he's still got the machete in his face. I know it's kind of comical, but that's something that I really did like in this movie. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, Jenny really makes this movie great. Uh, the actress, the character, she's awesome in this movie. Um, and like I said, the Mark scene, that right there alone is worth watching. Dude in a wheelchair gets hit in the face with a machete and rolls all the way down the stairs. So great movie. Uh, so like I said, from here on out, we're going to be seeing a lot more pros than cons because these are all, in my opinion, the better of all these movies. So from 13 to 1, we're going to have a lot more fun, a lot less negative. So thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys tomorrow. What's going on, guys? Uh, back to the countdown today. Coming in at number 12 is the OG Halloween. Um, the movie's a lot better than I remember it being upon a rewatch. Um, I don't like disappearing, Michael. Like, there's this one scene where she's looking at him. The camera goes to him, and he's there. It goes back to her. It goes back, and he's not there. She didn't stop looking, but we did. So did he, like, hide while she was watching or what? Like, I didn't really get that part. Um, more killing and eating dogs. Mike, kill as many people as you want, Michael. Leave the damn dogs alone. Stop hurting the damn dogs. Uh... I don't like the scene where Michael uses a sheet as a disguise in the house. I, I don't like that whole scene. It bothers me. And the Judith Myers headstone. Another thing that I just, you know, they put it in there for a fear factor. I get it. But I just, I don't like that part of Michael Myers. I don't get it, I guess. Um, the pros of this movie, obviously, Jamie Lee Curtis, the Scream Queen. She's great in this movie. The Halloween theme, which is up there with Jaws and Star Wars, is one of the most iconic themes in all of cinema. Uh you got to love the classroom window scene when she's looking out the window and she sees him. That's, again, iconic scene. Um, Loomis's speech. I saw a six-year-old child had eyes as black as a devil, or I can't remember word for word, but great scene. Um, uh, Michael does have a good amount of jump scares in this movie. And this movie is also the beginning of Michael killing people with a knife and sticking them to the wall. Bob is stuck on the wall. Love that scene. I don't know why that scene's always stuck with me, but I love that scene of Bob hanging with the knife in him. That's a good scene. And while we're talking about iconic, uh, the closet scene, you know, where he's punching through the closet and she ends up getting the hanger and stabbing him in the eye. That's awesome. And one of my favorite lines in any movie, was that the boogeyman? Yes, it was. That's a great line and a great movie. Um, again, growing up, I was not a big fan of the Halloween series. 
But during my rewatch, I gained a new respect for him. And this one really got a lot more of my respect. This is a decent movie. Um, I think it's because younger me started off with Jason over Michael Myers. So I kind of felt like I was betraying Jason by watching Michael Myers, as weird as that sounds. But number 12 is the OG Halloween. I'll see you tomorrow for number 11. What's up, guys? Back to the countdown today. Coming in at number 11 is A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, The Dream Warriors. Um, I actually like this movie a lot more than I remember liking it. I actually just rewatched it again today. That's how much I enjoy it. Um, what I don't like about it, I don't like the Sister Mary Ghost, you know, plot of the movie. I feel like that was just thrown in as filler to kind of give you a backstory on why Freddy's a bad guy. We don't need that. He's a bad fucking guy. That's all we need. And this gets addressed a lot more in depth in later movies anyway. So it was just a time filler thing. I think Wizard Master Will looks ridiculous when he has the cape and stuff on. He looks like a six-year-old just put on his dad's shirt and tie. It's all baggy and he looks like a little kid. Um... I've never been a fan of the faces in Freddy. I don't like the idea that Freddy eats the souls to gain power. And I don't like Freddy's death. Honestly, Freddy's death is the reason this movie is as low as it is. And it's at 11, so it's not like it's low. But if they had a better ending to this movie, it would be much higher. I don't like, oh, let's put holy water on his bones. It's like they wrote this great movie, got to an end, and didn't know how to end it. They're like, oh, well, holy water will work. That kills everything. So, I mean, the ending ruined what could potentially be a top three movie, in my opinion. Um, the reason why it's a top three, the best cast. Patricia Arquette is great as Kristen. I love Kincaid. Um, I'll talk more about him in uh, Nightmare 4. Spoilers, that hasn't been happened yet, so you know it's coming. Um, the Freddy Worm, when it's eating Kristen. That whole scene has scared the shit out of me as a kid. Uh, TV Freddy, welcome to primetime, bitch. I used to say that all the time when I was a kid. Welcome to primetime, bitch. I'd be playing a video game, and I'd, I'd say it. Um, Freddy gets the syringe fingers enforces the overdose that scene is incredible i love that scene the fear you feel in that scene uh while we're talking marionette phil something i didn't talk about when the kids are you know banging on the wall and they break the window and they're screaming at him and joey's running through the hallway hitting the walls you feel anxiety for him you know what they're going through it's a greatly acted scene and nancy's death they had the balls to kill off the final girl from part one um in my opinion the best final girls of all time have been sydney prescott from scream laurie strode from halloween and Nancy, you know, Nancy, I mean, they named a Stranger Things character after her, she's a fantastic final girl, fantastic movie, like I said, if it didn't have the ending it did, it'd be a top three, I'll see you tomorrow for number 10.